exclusive. I, I grew up like a savage. Get out, gotta get out of here soon. But we, I want to ask you about the Bloomberg situation. So, you took a picture with him. Was that yeah. out here? It was in Compton. Oh, that was in Compton. Yeah. Now, can you give context? Because if you read the comments, everybody's big homie. That ain't the move. What you doing? What? You might as well fuck with Trump. They saying all kind of shit. Yeah. So, how do you how do you feel? I mean, and, and give I, some context I, I, to. I it. mean, I mean, first of all, you know, the dude said he apologized. He said he made a mistake. Mm. So the stop and frisk. He said he was wrong. The racist statements, he was wrong. He was wrong. Okay. He was out of line. And, you know, uh, he probably didn't even write those policies up anyway. Somebody probably brought them to him and told him to support him. Um, but what really caught my attention is that he said he wants to put some of this money back into the black community. And I know how desperately we need some economical stimulation. Is he down for the cannabis? I don't know if he's down for cannabis or not. I thought that was your lure. I said Rick got no, a new plug. No, I don't. I don't, I don't, <laughs> he got, really, I don't really. I don't really. I don't really need his help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, you don't. It ain't for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if he can help my community, absolutely. There you go again, helping people I don't have realize. To, I have that. to check his plausibility. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is he real or is he just running his mouth? Because most of the politicians don't promise us nothing. Right. They don't. You know, they don't even say, I'm going to do this for the nah, black community. They tell the Chinese community, though, they, what they promised Exactly. Them. Yeah. So for him to even say that to me gave me some points with me, that he at least said that. He at least know that we should be getting something. Mm-hmm. Because if you, don't, if you don't think that you should get something, you won't ask for it. Right. But once somebody tell you that they're going to do something for you, and you start to look forward to that, which, in my opinion, should help us as a community say, maybe something's owed us. I believe that there's bridges to all, all people. Like, I, I, I won't put your situation in it because I'm going to tell you this. Coming from a street guy to a street guy, I trust you. I trust what you're doing. The streets trust you. The streets still believe what you believe. That's why you can do four Vlad interviews and they still get views on top of views. Absolutely. Because to us, you are the blueprint. You never said I was the biggest drug dealer. You never said I was the richest. You just said I am who I am, and this is what I did, right? Absolutely. And everybody from the communities and the ghettos believe in that, right? So for us to believe in you, when we see that picture, or at least for me speaking for myself, all I can do is trust you and say, we got to leave let's it up to happens. Rick. Yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Let Rick do what he do. Where is he going with it? You know, and, 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 and with any game, you know, like... Just I, I, let's go back to the streets. We're gonna use the streets uh, uh, analogy. If somebody in the street is gonna do something to somebody, they gotta get to know them. Right. They gotta know where they at, what they thinking, right. how they thinking. Right. You can't get no money from nobody if you don't know nothing about them. Absolutely. If you just stay away and I don't wanna have nothing to do with that person, then there's no way that you can benefit or know that you can't benefit. Right. If you don't go and get to know this person, so. In the streets, we do that in the streets, but now when it comes down to politics, because he's running for the president of the United States or because he's a mayor, mm-hmm. he's over our head. Mm-hmm. He's somebody that can't be touched. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that nobody in this country shouldn't be able to be touched. Uh, uh, now, Trump is doing some some, 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 some untouchable stuff. Man, some you know, incredible the shit. He's running yeah. this thing, and, and I think that he's really taking it out of a, a democratic uh, 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 system, mm-hmm. you know, he's almost going to a, a dictatorship. He is, and, he is. And I would rather see anybody in there than him. Absolutely. I gotta ask you um, the new things you're doing with the cannabis business. Um, we got Tucky Blunt in here from uh, Blunt and More. He got his cannabis cl- um, dispensary through Equity Program. He's actually from down the street. Caught his case down the street. I went to, you know, a funny story real quick. His dad was my connect, and I was going to school with him, and he didn't he didn't know, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy that he turns around and catches a case four blocks away, right? And then that leads him to getting a dispensary through the equity program, which I believe is a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Well, you know, I've been going around the country pushing it. Uh, matter of fact, we did we did a live on on, on Instagram. Oh, you and Tuck, yeah, 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 yeah about uh, him being the first person to win a social equity license. Uh, and this was before I won mine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then about four months later, after we did that, I wound up winning me one uh, as well. 
but uh, uh, the social equity is a wonderful thing. But we can't just stop at cannabis. We got to take social equity everything into everything because you know they promised us forty acres in a mule. We ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Big Rich, man, from Frisco. He got a thing called Project Level. He was just here with Lil D. And they have an equity thing going on where they're going to be like, I don't know, with the developers, that it's the same thing with the property. They got to give us 30%. Everything. Yeah, they yeah, come be so clean this shit up. We got to have some of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why not us? Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, nobody has been treated worse than blacks in this country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Slavery was, was, was terrible. And, and, you know, they say when they incarcerate you, you're being rehabilitated. A model tennis coach used to say, how can you rehabilitate something that's never been habilitated? Mm -hmm. So first thing, let's start habilitating our people. Let's yes. uh, allow some of this money to trickle down uh, uh, from these industries and help young black men. Absolutely. Because we're under attack more so than anybody in this country right now. Yeah. We have been made the, uh, the scapegoats, you know, the the reason for all the problems that they're having in this country. And you, um, um, before I let you go, real quick, you said tennis. I want to just tap on real quick. So you hit balls with Arthur Ashe, and you was, you was like all city or something. Like you was yeah, like man. you wasn't no average tennis player. I was pretty good. You know, I could beat uh, uh, Cornbread was was uh, one of the top guys in the area. Okay, uh, the top guy. He was he was traveling with Arthur Ashe. Okay, he traveled. Arthur Ashe picked him up. And you knew Venus and Serena, too, right? I knew them when they was little kids. When they was right? young, yeah. 12. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. When she was 12, she, she was hitting the ball at 100 miles an hour. Oh, no, they was, yeah. hitting, the ball. They was yeah. hitting the ball at a, at a young, young age. You know, uh, Richard had a, a idea, and uh, he stuck to it. You know, uh, I had an idea, too. You know, I had some kids. I, had, I was sponsoring about, about 12 or 13 kids at the same time, and Venus and Serena would come down and play with them. Uh, 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 you thinking about having another academy? That would be pretty dope. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm gonna have a tennis academy. I know it's your passion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not just tennis. You know, my, my passion is 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 to uplift uh, uh, my race. Yeah. You know, to help my race become uh, uh, economically sound, because I think that most of our problems that we're having right now in this country is, is economically uh, is economical problems, not problems of uh, ill will or mm -hmm. just bad people nah. but yeah. uh, um, you know some people say money is the root of all evil I believe that the lack of money is the root of all evil because you don't see people with a pocket full of money or a bag of money going out getting nobody in the head for their purse but a guy that's broke hungry and down on his luck would do almost anything now um, and uh, <laughs> real quick if you if, if leading going up into the future your business is that of course you are a published author you are in the cannabis business now, right now. Is there is it any other thing that you got going on that you oh, want people close. to be aware of? Close. I saw you when you came home uh, with your screen print set up and yeah. all that. And uh, I was doing that. Me and my partner, that's something we did. I jump into everything. I like what you do. Like, be involved with it all, man. Be well, a renaissance. Well, well, you know, something might slow down. You know, that's Absolutely. You go. You keep on going. I go to books. Right. Books slow down. I go to t-shirts. Right. T-shirts slow down. I do sweatshirts. Yeah. You know, I do speaking engagements. I sell cars. Uh, I'm working on the movie, Motion Picture. I got two reality shows I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, one for the dispensary, uh, uh, one called Street Bosses, where I'll be helping guys when they get out of prison, help them get on their feet. Uh, what else I'm doing? You know, uh, motivational speaking. Uh, I guess that's enough for right now. My last two questions, and uh, what I want you to expound on is for South Central and uh, Oakland. Um, right? So the first thing I want to ask you is... Uh, about Oakland, so uh, everybody wants to know and, and make it clear on uh, when you talk about Lil D. When he, when you first met him and he came down there as that youngster, like like what did you think? Like you seen this kid? Well, I've been hearing about D. Okay, but you hadn't put a face to him, yet. right? Okay, right. they've been telling me about him, and, and you know, D shorter than me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was about nineteen, I think, when I first met him. Okay, and they told me he had all this money. You know, since uh -huh. he was worth about. They were saying it was six hundred thousand. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my partner, Big Mike, brought him to me. Had him, and they was in a big old van. Okay. And uh, they pulled up on my block, and uh, they slid the door open. And this little dude jumped out. He's about dark as you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had no hair on his face at that time. You know, no gray. 
Uh, he looked like he could he could have probably went down for maybe 16, 17 years old. Right. You know, he looked at really, really young. Yeah. Uh, but I heard that he was a serious dude. Right. And, uh, you know, we jumped in the car and went and got something to eat and just, you know, just chopped it up. Chopped yeah. Chopped bobo. And uh, we've been cool ever since that day. Yeah. You know, and D never had no disagreements, you know, no. So was it, I mean, no, it, was, it wasn't it was awkward for somebody to pull up on you and be trying to get a hundred of them. Like that well, just, it, it, it would have been if he wouldn't have been with, who with your was partner. Playing. Right. Yeah. 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 He yeah. was with somebody I knew. Yeah. And I already heard of him too. Okay. So it wasn't like, uh, um, is a total stranger coming up. You know, yeah. Never heard of him. You know, a guy come from St. Louis. I ain't never heard of him. I'll be like, man, yeah. Where you come from? Man? Yeah. But you know, I'd already heard of D. And and I'd heard of Felix. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, there was some. It was some history there. And the, and the last one is is for your neck of the woods, man. Like, um, you know, early on, um, uh, uh, with the with the peace treaty. Uh, shout out to Big Bone Q and uh, and a lot of other cats. And but now after Nipsey passing and with Nipsey passing. We talked about economics a second ago and doing something for your neighborhood. I believe what he was doing was amazing, right? So what he was doing in his hood and trying to buy back the block and do all that type of stuff, that was great. Uh, For him to be chopped down like that and then we, as a people, talk of peace, but there's gang politics. Just like in Oakland, it's practically the same thing. We don't got Crips and Bloods, but it's politics, right? Right, right. So how do you feel that we get over that hump? Well, well, the first thing that that we have to know that our brother is not our enemy. Even Absolutely. He may do some things that an enemy would do. You know, a lot of that stems from the lack of knowledge, you know, of self as well as where they come from and, and how we got in these situations. So I think that, that that's something that we can overcome as well. Uh, once once we have a movement where people can see where we're going, you know, right now, having a vision is so important that most people don't have that vision. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, that's going to be one of my uh, one of my goals is to help people see the vision of where we could go if we all cooperated as one and uh, pool our resources together. Uh, when I was in prison and I was reading an article that we make a trillion dollars a year. Man. A trillion dollars a year. We shouldn't have no homeless, nobody unemployed who wants to work. So, it's just a matter of us pooling that energy together. Like uh, my man said, Thomas Edison harnessed that electricity. Yeah. And had he not harnessed it, we wouldn't have had a light switch right now. Or these cameras and yeah. this other stuff that we get from electricity. So it's going to be a matter of us coming together and just harness this energy that we have. Man, I'd like to thank you for coming today, Brother Rick Ross, man. Every, we do it again. Yeah, right, man, we, we again. man, we got to do it again, man. Do a book signing. Maybe, maybe throw oh. me a book signing here at the barbershop. We'll definitely do that. Podcasts and books and yeah. just come in, you know, and, 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 and talk to the kids and, 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 and let everybody know, you know what I'm saying, that these books are life-changing. Right. That, that you can change your life with these books right here. Uh, and I wrote them for y'all, so uh, go check them and out. With your, uh, and, and, the, and the name of the books is, the first one is uh, Freeway, Freeway Rick Ross, The Untold Autobiography. The other one is the 21 keys of success. We believe if you use those 21 keys, you're going to have the same success that I'm having right now. And and, and as far as your uh, uh, T-shirt business, can they go somewhere and buy your shirts? They can get it at my website, FreewayRickyGross.com. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at FreewayRicky. And if you go to my Instagram, uh, it'll lead you back to my uh, to my website. Also, Facebook is FreewayRickyGross.com. Trying to get my, my Twitter back up. Somebody hacked my Twitter. Okay, man, took yeah. me down. Lost like three hundred thousand people. Yeah, but uh, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, any of your cannabis products available yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be over at Nugs today. Okay. Uh, ah, what street is that, man? Uh, see what street we're gonna be on? Uh, T Garden in San Leandro. Yeah, we're gonna be on T Garden in San Leandro. Uh, so come out to Nugs today. I'm going to have a few books. I got about, about 40, 50 books. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come get your book. And if you smoke, come check out my product. Uh, I'm going to have the best product in the market, on the market. Uh, what strands you got out now? I mean, anything uh, you selling? We're coming, to, we're coming with the King Louis. Okay. Uh, we got a cookie. And I forgot the other strain. You know, I don't keep up with all We need, things. we so, so, so I'm a smoker, right? Right. And... Everybody going crazy over the Gary Payton. Everybody going crazy over what they going. We need a actual freeway Rick strand. So the best chemists need to contact my man 
Oh, we yeah, do that. We do that. We, yeah. we, we got I got some bad growers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got some bad growers. We growers. need to put that thing together, man, so so it could be a, a, a some real dynamite out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um yeah, I'd like to thank you for coming again, bro. And uh, just shout out to Instagram one more time for me. Freeway Ricky Ross on Facebook, Freeway Rick on Instagram, and the website is freewayrickyross.com. Uh, and we'll be over at Nugs today <clears throat> from 2 to 4. So come by, holler at your boy. Let's get a picture. You know what I'm saying? Talk some game. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been going around the country with the social equity, teaching people about how to get in the industry. And I can also show you how to start your own brand. It's a lot of game out here. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Man, I'm Lord Rab, man. We are at everything on all platforms. We had no vultures. You can hit Corner Barber. You can hit Clea, H-A-G underscore universe, man. And uh, we out, man. Peace. One.